In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, from God, Amen. Today is our uh, first servant meeting after the servant retreats. For myself, I enjoy the servant retreat with all of you. When we spoke about uh, how the Lord, through His power, He can invite all of us, change us, and through us, He can serve His people according to His plan. Uh, before the Nativity, the Fathers, we... Uh, hope to share together one spiritual meal for the servants and through the servants for all the church. And we uh, hope to read the book of Exodus. And why we choose the book of Exodus? Because there is relationship between the book of Exodus and the nativity fast. As you see in Kehki Brazis, we speak about Moses and the burning bush. We speak about uh, the tabernacle. And uh, when you read the book of Exodus, you will find that is the same story, the same message, as the Lord wants to save his people from the slavery of Pharaoh and to give them freedom, is the same. Today he wants to lead his people out of their slavery to this world, to go out and to live and to reach the promised land and to live in freedom. So we are now reading the book of Exodus. We hope to finish it just before the Christmas. So I just want to share with you some points from the book of Exodus so we can encourage everyone to complete the book of Exodus and to reach the, the goal of having this one spiritual meal together, to be united together, and to have this deep relationship with the Lord. We can taste the Lord and we can share others tasting the same that we have from the Lord. So when you read the book of Exodus, you'll find the book of Exodus, 40 chapters. The first 25 chapters about the story of the salvation of the people of Israel and how the Lord he chose Moses to be their savior. And through Moses and his staff, the Lord freed the people of Israel out of the slavery of Pharaoh to know the Almighty God and to have this promise with the Lord and the covenant with the Lord through the blood of the animals in the wilderness of Sinai. So this is the first 25 chapters. The last 15 chapters about the tabernacle and the measurements of the tabernacle and the colors of the tabernacle and, uh, and how can you build this tabernacle and all the things about how to worship the Lord. So having this Reading the first 1 to 25, you'll find the release of the people of Israel, how the Lord has a plan for his people. He will send the plan, he will send the Savior, and he will lead his people to go out of Israel. We as the servants of the Lord, it is not our mission to plan for the salvation. Our mission is just to trust that we are weak and we have nothing to do, and we have our leader is the Lord himself, he is the Savior, and he will choose the weak to save his people. As he chose Moses, after 40 years, he escaped in the wilderness of Sinai. The 15 chapter, the last 15 chapters about the tabernacle. So the first 25 chapters about Moses and how Moses is a sample or a type to the Lord Jesus Christ. I choose just four points, and I will give you a chance to give me more points about the relationship between Moses and between the Lord himself. That's why, because in the, 21st, uh, the first 25 chapters, you'll find that Moses is a type of Christ. That is the same for every one of us. In, in the mission, in the ministry, in our services, the Lord will choose us to be a type for him. As Moses was a type to Christ, both me and you, the Lord will choose us and he will change us and he will work in us to be a type of Christ himself. So what is the relationship between Moses and between Christ? The fathers of the church, they said to us, when you read the Bible, try to focus on two levels. When you read, say, the story of Moses, how can I find Christ in Moses? How can I find myself in Moses? So when we go back to the first 25 chapters, we'll find many things between Moses and Christ. So Moses is a type of Christ. One of them, Moses was both a king 
and a slave in the same, in the same time. Moses has two natures united together. Moses was one of the sons of the Jews, of the Hebrews, and he, always, he also was a son of Pharaoh himself. So he is a slave and a king at the same time. That's presenting Christ himself. He is the fully God and he is fully man. He is the son of man, son of Joseph, as they said, called, as they called the Lord, the son of Joseph or son of Mary. On the other type, he is the son of God. He is the one who is one of God and one of the men. So Moses being or having two natures in one or two identities in one presenting Christ himself, who united in himself both the heaven and the earth together. Another thing taken from the water, the word Moses, it's from the Egyptian or the Pharaoh or Coptic word Mo, it's Mo'u or water, Wushe, it's mean to take. So Moshe or Moses, it means taken from the water. And Christ himself, he started his service to be the Messiah from the water when he was baptized. So the word of Moses equal to the word of Christ. The third point about the father of Moses and his mother, both his father and mother from the tribe of Levi. And as you know, the tribe of Levi was the tribe of the priesthood. So the Lord, when he was born, he accepted from the Magi, the, he accepted frank incense, which was a simple or a type that he, he is a high priest. Because Moses was from the tribe of Levi. So the Lord Jesus Christ was the high priest, not according to Levi, but according to Melchizedek. And you'll find something amazing between Moses and the Lord. As I shared with the Father yesterday, when you see in the in the, in the gospel of last Sunday, when the angel appeared to St. Mary, he gave her the new uh, tidings and he told her and said, your relative Elizabeth, and Elizabeth from the tribe of Judah, but Moses was from the tribe of Levi. So how there is a relationship between Elizabeth and between St. Mary? You'll find it in the book of Exodus, chapter 6, when you see that Aaron, Aaron, the high priest of the Old Testament, married Elisha from the house of Judah. And he said Aaron took to himself Elisha, daughter of Aminadab, the head of the father's house of the Levites, according to their families. So through Aaron, Aaron got married with one of the members of one of the daughters of Judah tribe. So both Levi and Judah united through Aaron. So Christ himself, through himself, he united both the priesthood and the kingdom. So through Aaron, the high priest of the Old Testament, both the kingdom and the priesthood were united. The same with Jesus, the new Aaron, the new Moses. So You'll find when the kings of the east came to the Lord, they, they offered him frank incense as a sign that he is a, a priest. And they offered him also gold as a sign that he is a king. So through this story, when we read the first 25 chapters, try to focus. How can I find Christ in this story? I give you some examples. Can you give me more about the relationship between Moses and Christ? How can we see Christ in every chapter, in every verse? In the, in the book of Exodus. And give me another example. As a shepherd. Yes, Moses spent the first 40 years of his life in the palace of Pharaoh. But the next 40 years, he spent them as a shepherd in the wilderness of, Shain, of Sinai. And the Lord chose him to be the shepherd of his people after he shepherded the flock for 40 years. And the Lord said about himself, I am the, I'm the good shepherd. And the same for David. David was a shepherd. And the same for Abraham and for Isaac, for Jacob. That's a great point. Another point. Yes. Savior. savior. Moses was the savior of his people. He saved them from the slavery of Pharaoh. And the angel, when he gave the good news to St. Mary, he said, you will call his name Joshua or Jesus because he is 
the Savior. He will save his people, not from the slavery of Pharaoh, but from sin. Thank you. Another point between Moses and Christ. Sorry? The Passover lamb, Exodus 12. Moses, through the blood shedding, the blood of the Passover lamb, he saved his people and he protected them from death. The same, the Lord Jesus. In the night of his crucifixion, he offered the Passover lamb to say that I am the new Moses. <coughs> and we call the Passover our Passover. It is not just lamb. Jesus Christ himself is now our Passover. Al Pascha. Pascha means the Passover. Perfect. Another point between Christ and Moses. Moses was patient. Yes, after, it is not in the first part of his life, but in the last part, he was so patient. Yes, and the Lord Jesus Christ, he is always, he is the God of our salvation. He is so patient. Thank you. Another point. Father Dr. Brain. Of Christ on the cross. Yes, and a sign of healing. Thank you. And also, Moses gave his people to eat the manna from heaven and to drink from the rock. That's presenting Christ, who gave his people to eat his body and to drink his blood. Moses crossed the Red Sea. And be careful, the word red, presenting the Hades. So he opened the Hades through the staff. And through this, he went through the Hades to transfer his people from the slavery of death, that is the apocalypse, the bright Saturday, to reach the promised land. So in the Saturday, the bright Saturday, we, we read the first host, the crossing the Red Sea, and Red Sea presenting the Hades. So they called him the, the Red Sea, the Red Sea. What else? Sorry, I can't hear. My study. Ah, he he was the logos of his people, and he gave his people the Ten Commandments. As as we see in the Feltasbihah and Midnight Prayers, we see that Moses received the Ten Commandments. God gave Moses to give his people the Ten Commandments, which is the Word of God inscribed in stones. And they said that Christ Himself. He received from the Father to us the Ayuta or Yuta. Yuta, it means in Coptic language, number 10, which is Jesus himself. So the Ten Commandments was Jesus himself. So Christ offered himself at the pleasure of his Father to us, to know the Father through the Son, through the Logos of God. You'll find many, many, many points between Christ and between Moses. So Moses was a type of Christ himself, just I want to share with you two points from the first 25 chapters. The first one, he desires to feast with his people. When, I, we can choose one to read for us this uh, passage. George, can you read it for us? Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus Just before reading, sorry, George, for interruption. Just to try to know what did the Lord ask Moses to say to Pharaoh? What was the goal of the release of the people of Israel out of Egypt? Is just to serve God or to offer sacrifice or to be released? What was the goal? What was the plan in the mind of God when he asked Moses to, Moses to go to Pharaoh? Try to, to, to find the golden, the key, the, the key of the golden word. Yeah. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I shall obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. So they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go a three days' journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Yeah, thank you. So, see what, what did the Lord say in this verse? Thus say the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. That is the goal. So while we are celebrating the nativity fast, the fast is not the goal. And the feast is not the goal. 
And the feast is not our feast. Can you imagine the Lord wants us to go out from our slavery to have a feast to him? Feast to him, to me. So the feast is the feast of the Lord. He wants to be happy with us. He cannot be happy without us. He wants to, to have happiness and joy. And we are the source of his pleasure. So the Lord said to Moses, Go tell Pharaoh, I want my people, my children, to come so I can have feast with them. So that is the first thing. And then be careful about this. So they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. And that will be the key of the rest of the, of the scripture. The tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the Lord met with us. So this is the way to have the feast to the Lord, to meet with the Lord. So the first point, he desires to feast with his people. So we are doing the feast in the church not for us, but the, the feast of the Lord. We are doing the fast not for us, but for the Lord. We are not the center of the worship, but the Lord himself. Yes, we are here in the church not because we need the Lord, but because he needs to meet with us. So we are here not as an action, but we are here as a reaction. So the church in, in its tradition, the first reaction when we come to the church to give thanks to the Lord. We pray all our liturgies by giving thanks to the Lord because that is the normal reaction when we receive the invitation of the Lord to come to his, to his house. So release my people so they can have feast to me. The second point, he desires to have a new experience with him. Can you imagine the, the night of the Passover when the Lord asked Moses and the people of Israel to shed the blood of the Lamb? He asked them something very strange. Do you know what is this? Let us read it and, and know what was the, the, the advice or the order that the Lord gave to the people of Israel in the night of crossing the Red Sea. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. So the Lord said to Moses, that month was uh, the fourth month. The Lord said to them, from today, that will be the first month. So you have to reset your calendar. You have to start from here. This is the day of our relationship. And can you imagine when you read the book of Exodus, you will find that the Lord gave them the instructions to build the tabernacle. And they, what was the first day? to start worshiping God in the tabernacle? The first day of the, first, of the second new year. So they spent one year in the wilderness without having a tabernacle. They established the tabernacle and they started to worship in the first day of the first month. So while we are celebrating the New Year Eve and the Christmas, try to focus about these points. What is the feast? It is not our feast, it is feast for the Lord. Number two, what is the meaning of having a new year? New year, it means I have to reset my time. The Lord now, he is the cornerstone of my life. I have to, to make the, the Lord the flag of my journey. The Lord is the head of my time. So let us see how St. Paul in Ephesians, he spoke about Jesus Christ as the cornerstone, as the top stone of our building. We have to start our time with him. I have to start my day with him. I have to start the first the year with him. I have to start uh, the mission with him. I have to start the liturgy with him. He is the beginning. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. So that the Lord reset their minds to consider himself as the Alpha of their journey. So let us read what St. Paul said in the book of Ephesians. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Chief cornerstone. In whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom we also being built together are dwelling place of God in the Spirit. 
So it is great for the servant in the Sunday school or in his service to speak about the virtues, to speak about the Bible, to speak about the rights of the church. But the most important thing to teach about the Lord himself. He is the cornerstone. He is the chief cornerstone of our, of our mission. We have to preach the Lord. We have to speak about the Lord. The Lord is the, is the Alpha and He is the Omega. When we have the feast, we are, we, we are having this feast for the Lord. So let us go to the next 15 chapters just to finish. The tabernacle. The tabernacle, we call the tabernacle in Arabic, the tent of meeting. They, the people of Israel, they lived in Egypt for more than 430 years. 430 years. And the Lord asked them to leave their houses, their farms, everything. They left everything in Egypt. And he asked them to ask the Egyptians to give them some gold and some silver yani as a reward for what they served them and they left in Egypt. So when they crossed the Red Sea and they went to the wilderness of Sinai, the Lord, out of his compassion, out of his love, they did not ask and said, Lord, please come and dwell among us. They did not think about this. But the Lord, by himself, he said to them, I want to dwell among you. I want to dwell in a tent like you. They left everything and they lived in tents in the wilderness of Sinai. And the Lord said, I will dwell the same like you, in a tent like you. So they did not ask the Lord to come, but he asked them to be with them. So when we read about the tabernacle in the last 15 chapters, you'll, like, you'll find the tabernacle like this. This is the east direction, and th in this side you'll find the gate or the door of the uh, of the tabernacle in the east and they are facing the west when you enter in this part you will find about uh, the, 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 the pattern of the arrangement of the tents of the people of Israel the same like Urbana you know Urbana in the Urbana you will find a, a, a big cross in the center and three crosses around in every side in its four sides and then you'll find the, the Hebrew or the Greek words, Holy God, Holy Mighty. The same was, put my tent in the middle, in the center. And around it, in every side, put three tribes tents. Here three tribes, here three tribes, and every side three tribes. But the first road or the first part, put the clergy. Here put all the uh, Levi tribe in this area around the tabernacle and then put three tribes in every side the tribe of Judah which will from this tribe the Savior will come in the east just near to the gate because he is the door he is the gate you when you enter to the tabernacle you'll find the first thing the altar uh, the bronze altar of the burnet offering all the people of Israel they are allowed to be around the tabernacle but there is a fence here in white color in this area. No one allowed to enter here except the, the pure one. No one without sin or unclean can enter to this part. And all the people are allowed to enter to this part to offer their sacrifices here. And there is no way for anyone to cross this area. Just for the priest, they have in this area, we have what we call the bronze uh, basin or the bronze labor, in which you'll find pure water. So if you are a priest, you have to wash your hands, your feet, your head in this water, and then now you are clean enough to enter to this part which we call the holy. In the holy, you'll find three things. There is no external source of light in this area. So you'll find in this area what we call the golden lampstand, seven candles to enlighten the holy. And in other side, you'll find the showbread table. And in the middle, you'll find the incense golden altar. And there in this part, 
what we call the veil. The veil is curtain separating the holy from the holy of holies. And inside this part, which is the most holy or the holy of holies, you'll find the uh, Ark of Covenant. In, in above the Ark of Covenant, you'll find two cherubs or two karubs, and the Lord appeared to the high priest in this area. So all the people of Israel, they can enter just to this area, the outside area. The priest only, they can enter to the, holy, the holies. This part not allowed to anyone except the only the high priest to enter the, to the holy of holies just once a year. So the priest, they divide themselves to many teams or many groups and they have lot to choose one of them to offer the incense morning and evening in this way, in this part, in this place. So that is just a diagram for the, for the tent or the, uh, the, the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. It is not just a place that the Lord wants to, the people of Israel to worship him, but that is the story of the Lord. That's who is the Lord. And that's who want the Lord, every one of us to be. So let us think about it. Who is the tabernacle? The tabernacle is the Lord himself. The place of meeting between God and man, and between man and man. So that is the cross. If you see the urbana, you'll find in the center, the tent, the tabernacle, and three tribes in every side. And we do the Coptic cross the same like this. Three sides around the center for every wing of the cross. So this is, this is the, 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 the shape of the tabernacle. This is what the Lord wants us to be around him, to be with him, to meet with him. The cross is two wings. The first wing connecting both God with the man and the other connecting man with his brother. So we cannot be Christian without having this relationship with God and with my brother. And I have to be orthodox. Orthodox to have a balanced relationship between me and God and between me and my brother. So the Lord himself, he called himself Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. So the tabernacle or the tent or the tent of meeting, it means God wants to meet with us. And he wants us to come as a church, as a group, together. To meet with him. It is not just an individual relationship. And there is a verse or a, a word very, 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 uh, very correct. We cannot enter the kingdom of God alone. We will go to the enter of God as a church, as a family. As God himself is three in one, we cannot enter the kingdom of God by ourselves. I have to go with my family with my church. So, let us read this verse. Next, please. Yeah, sure. And, and, and the Lord becomes flesh and dwells among us. And be, be careful, yeah, be sure. That's from the verse, the, the Gospel of John, chapter 1 and verse 14. Do you know in, in, the, in the Greek uh, verse, in the Greek uh, translation, or the, the, the text, original text, the word became flesh and he established his tent among us or his tabernacle. So that is the incarnation. The incarnation that the Lord, he built for himself a tent like us. He took flesh like me, the same. When you see all the people of Israel, they're living in tents. So the Lord did not ask them to build for him a palace. But he said, I will take the same tent like you. Can you imagine? That is incarnation. He will be like us, the same like us. He loved us till the point that he shared us our blood and our bones and our flesh. So the word became flesh and he built his tabernacle among us. And, and we behold his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That is John 1.14. Another one, another verse about how why? What is the goal? To have a tabernacle among us. It's just to worship him, to know him. It's just to be close to us or something more deep. Huh? Second? 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So the tabernacle among the people of Israel is not a sign of just holiness. It is a sign of healing, of forgiveness. Yes, are you a sinner? Do not worry. This is the way. Offer a sacrifice. Come close to me. So the Lord did not send his son to condemn, to judge the world, but to save. That is the tabernacle. We are celebrating the Savior. Yes, I am a sinner. But I have a Savior. Yes, I am a sinner. But he came not to judge me, but to free me, to save me. So that's our mission. Our mission is not to judge the kids or to judge uh, el, el, el people that you are serving. We are here to serve them. We are here to encourage them. We are here, we are here to bring joy and happiness to them. That is, that is so much that the Father loved the whole world and he gave him his son as a ransom. So when you read in the tabernacle, you find many things amazing. One of them, I chose just three, four things for the sake of time. One of them, the colors. The Lord gave us 15 chapters, very hard, very difficult. Numbers, colors, uh, measurements, very, very, very hard. But when you read, I've tried to find explanation, to find how can I find Jesus in, in the tabernacle and try to apply it for St. Mary and the relation between the tabernacle and St. Mary, try to apply it between the church now, the Orthodox Church and the tabernacle, you will be amazed. One of these things is the colors. It is not allowed for you to choose any color in the tabernacle to decorate the tabernacle except four colors. And when you see these four colors, you will be directed directly to the four Gospels and to the four incorporeal creatures in the book of Revelation. And there is a relationship between the book of Exodus and the book of Revelation. So we'll find in the book of Exodus, as an example, book of Exodus 15, you will find the song of, of Moses, the first host. And in Revelation 15, the song of Moses, the new song of Moses. It's amazing to try and, and be careful. The story of the Exodus, the people of Israel, when they came out of Egypt and Pharaoh tried to know what, persecute them and to <coughs> give them hard time and by the, the mighty hand of the Lord he gave them, he freed them from the slavery of Pharaoh, that will happen exactly through the exodus of the church from this world to the promised heaven not the promised land and Pharaoh will be so uh, uh, very angry the same like the Lord said about Satan Satan will be released in the last days. If you wanted to, to see what will happen, try to make a comparison between the book of Revelation and the book of Exodus. And what happened when the people of Israel came out of Egypt, and that will exactly happen through our journey. And as Moses, Lord sent Moses to save his people, he will send Elijah and Enoch to help the church to go out from the slavery of Pharaoh to the kingdom of God. So, regarding our returning back to the, the colors, four colors that will, will give you to know what is the mind of your beloved. The Christ, he prefers some colors, he prefers smell, and he gives them how to do an incense, special smell. He gives them how to uh, make an oil, المايرون. he gives them how to decorate the tabernacle. It is not your a choice or your job to do my tabernacle. He gave them, he gave Moses over the mountain the style. I need my tent to be like this. If the Lord gave all this attention to decorate the building and he gave a special wisdom to Baslail and Hur to do what the Lord gave to Moses. Try to know this and apply by how the Lord will give more and more attention to the one who will decorate his son and daughter in the Sunday school. Is that can Rabbana give all this attention, all this uh, 
uh, care to the building. And be careful that the Lord in, in John 1st and in John 2nd, in John 2nd, he spoke about that the people of Israel, they want to destroy the temple. And he said, you will destroy this temple. In three days, I will lose him back. So they thought that the Lord is speaking about the, the, the physical temple. And they said that he would build the temple in 46 years. And he will rebuild it in three days. St. John commented by the Holy Spirit and said, he spoke about the temple of his body. So the Lord is the temple. The Lord is the tabernacle. Sometimes we come to the church and have relationship with the ministry, with the service, with our kids, with the priest, but don't have relationship with Christ himself. Christ is the church. Christ is the master. Christ is the Lord. Christ is the tabernacle. Ministry is not activity. It's not to, give, to be a teacher giving lessons, but to be Christ himself. <coughs> Returning back to the colors. Four colors you can use to decorate my tabernacle. One of them is the white, purple, scarlet, blue. When you go back to the four gospels, you will find <coughs> St. <coughs> Matthew, and the incorporeal creatures. You will find St. Matthew spoke about the genealogy of Christ and the purity of the Son of Man. St. Mark, he presented Christ as the King of Kings, especially when he wrote to the Roman. St. Luke wrote to the Gentiles, to the Greek, and he presented Christ as the perfect sacrifice. So he started his gospel about Zechariah the priest offering the incense, offering the sacrifice. St. John spoke about God, the incarnated Logos, Jesus and his divine nature. So there is a relationship between these four colors, between these four incorporeal creatures, the book of Exodus, the book of Revelation, and the Old New Testament. Matthew spoke about Christ, the man, the man, the human being the model, the style. You cannot be a fully man without knowing Christ. And without Christ, you cannot reach the level of humanity. So St. Matthew spoke about Christ as the ideal standard of humanity. Christ is the man who, is in our, who took our nature especially without any sin. So that's presenting the white color. The purple, presenting St. Mark, the king, the lion. The scarlet, presenting St. Luke, who spoke about the perfect sacrifice, the ox. And then the blue, John, the sky, the eagle, who spoke about the divinity of Christ. So four colors, four gospels, four incorporeal creatures. Book of Genesis, book of Exodus, book of Revelation, one one story, the story of our salvation. Christ is the tent. The uniqueness of the tent amongst many. Yes, we have millions of tents in the wilderness of Sinai. But when you see, you will find one tent very unique. A special tent. It is the tent of God. Very pure. Have a fence. Uh, very unique. Very precious. The tabernacle is the most expensive building all over the history. Yani I think by, by now it may cost more than 500 billion dollars. It means this, the one who lives in this tent is a special one. He is the king of kings. Yes, Christ is very rich. Christ is the king of kings. His church, his tent is very rich. So the tent was the place of meeting for God and man, and man to his brother, representing the cross. I'm asking myself, am I the place in which God can meet with his people through me and in me? Am I the one who can gather all his friends, all his family, to gather together with God in my house? Am I the tabernacle? 
Christ himself, in himself, he gathered all the people of God to be one in him. So he chose to die on the cross, stretching his hands. And he fixed his hands with nails to say that every time I am opening my hands to gather all the people of God, all the children of God, to be one in me and have access with the Father through me. There was no door but just a white curtain representing the purity of Christ. No door. The Lord is reachable 24-7. 24-7 you can reach the Lord. 24-7 nothing can prevent you from reaching the Lord. Christ at the tent. Let us read this verse from the second book of Corinthians. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands. So, in the, in the history of the people of Israel, God started dwelling among his people through tent. Can you imagine, Dr. Muhib, what happened? When they were living in tents, the Lord say, I will live in tent like you. When they reached the promised land after 40 years, Everyone left his tent and they took palaces there, or homes, or farms, and they completely forgot to build a house to the Lord for more than 400 years. Till David came and they anointed David to be a king and they built a palace for him. He said, how can I, I dwell in a palace? And the God, the Lord of Lords, dwelling in a tent and not give sleep to my eyes till I build a temple or I build a house to the Lord. So that is, that's what touched the Lord. He said, I, I don't need to have a palace, but I need someone to care about me. So, as the people of Israel, they started the relationship with God through tent and then through temple, that will happen with us. Now I'm living in a tent, temporary. And one day, the Lord will release me from this tent to live in a house. Now I'm living in a temporary tent. One day I will go out from this tent to live in my house there forever. So let us continue. But we who are in this tent grown in burden, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed. Two points to finish. The first one, do you know what was the unit of measurements in the tabernacle? You'll find it many times. The Lord asked Moses to use a special <coughs> unit for measurement. Do you know what was, what was this unit? The cubit. Yes. What, what is the cubit? The cubit is the distance between the elbow and the middle ring, the middle finger. This is the elbow. And that's the same unit of the ark. When Noah started to build the ark, <coughs> he used the same, <coughs> the same unit. Is there any meaning that the Lord asked Moses to use this unit in building the tabernacle? Let us read these verses about the hand of God. How God, through the tabernacle, he wants his hands to be, to be clear. In your service, the hands of the Lord will support you. It is not your mission, believe me. You cannot, you cannot change one kid to be good or to be bad. That is the hands of the Lord. He will build his temple through you. He will build his tabernacle through you. So, so in every ministry, you have to see the, the hands of the Lord in your ministry. So let us read these two verses from... Isaiah and for, sorry, from Isaiah and from Psalms. We have three, four minutes to finish. Yes, all of us, we are the work of your hand. In my ministry, I am the work of the hands of the Lord. He will support me. He will guide me. He will encourage me. He will help me. Do not be disappointed. 
Don't focus on the fruits that you have in your service, but focus on the, on the hands of the Lord. The other, the other verse from Psalms 98. Yes. So in every in every wall, in every thing in the tabernacle you will find the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. The same in the church. This pillar is Christ Himself. This icon is Christ Himself. This window is Christ Himself. Through this window I can see the heaven. He is the only access to heaven. The Lamb is Christ Himself. The TV is Christ himself, the icons, the, the veil, the cross, everything, the dome, is Christ himself. This circle is Christ himself. So in everything you will find the cubit of Christ. Finally, the veil. What is the veil? As you see, the veil, as we mentioned before, the veil is the curtain or the, 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 the part who separates the holy from the holy of holies. So we now build the Orthodox Church the same like the tabernacle, but the opposite direction. Instead of coming from the east going to the west, we come from the west going to the east because the Savior is now among us. So this part presenting the holy and the altar presenting the holy of holies and this curtain presenting the veil. What is the veil? The veil is the curtain who separates the Holy of Holies from the, from the Holy. And St. Paul said that this veil presenting Christ himself, because the veil has two faces, one of them facing the Holy, and the other one presenting or facing the Holy of Holies. So the veil is apart from the Holy, and also is apart from the Holy of Holies. So Christ is the veil who united both the Holy and the Holy of Holies in himself. So when he was crucified, in the time of his death, what happened to the veil of the tabernacle? Let us read this verse from the book of Matthew. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, Many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to them. So Christ through himself, he is the veil, he accepted to be to be cut. So he can everyone find and access through him to the Father. I'm saying this for myself. Sometimes in my ministry I can be a veil to prevent others from reaching God without accepting to die and to be broken and to be cut, others cannot find Christ. Instead of being, of helping others to reach Christ, I can prevent them being a veil, but not a broken or a cut veil. So Christ, through himself, he accepted to be cut. He accepted himself to be destroyed. And the same in the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, he break his body. He said, this is my broken body. He shed his blood. Finally, to finish, that's the last, last slide, thanks God. We are the meeting place for the Lord. We are the tabernacle. The Lord is decorating every one of us through the hard times, through the good times, through the trials, through everything. He is doing many, many things in me. But he will finish in the last day. In the last day, he will put the pencil, well done. But now, he's still working in me. So let us finish by reading one, what St. Peter said about the tabernacle and how God is preparing every one of us to be precious stone in the building of the kingdom of heaven. Paul.
So glory be to God forever. Amen. So we encourage all of you, especially in the next few days, to read the book of Exodus as one unit, as one group that will unite all of us, that will give us a special power in the service. And also to practice who is Jesus in the, in the tabernacle in every chapter and how can I find myself. I am praying this for myself and for all of you to enjoy our Savior and to enjoy this season, the season of nativity to enjoy this freedom that we are invited to, and to preach this freedom to others, to, to, to preach the forgiveness of sin, to preach the joy, the feast of the Lord, the feast, the new year, the new, new song with the Lord. So Abuna Paul will lead us in the few minutes to worship together, to pray together, especially for the service, and then we will conclude and receive the final announcement. Thank you. Virgin, 
blessed in its midst the true testimony. The undefiled ark overlaid round about with gold and the mercy seat of the cherubim. The golden part of man was hidden. Behold the word of the Father came and was incarnate of you. The golden lampstand carrying the true light who is the unapproachable light of the world. The golden censer carrying the light for and the chosen incense with the red charoma. The rod of Aaron that blossomed, and the holy flower of incense. All these together direct us to the miraculous birth. O Virgin Mary, you decorated our souls, O Moses, the prophet, by the honor of the tabernacle which you have adorned. The first tabernacle which Moses has made, place of the forgiveness for the children of Israel. He made it with glory as commanded by the Lord and according to the pattern shown unto him. There was an ark in the tabernacle overlaid with gold within and without. There was a mercy seat in the tabernacle and the golden cherubim overshadowed it. There was a golden pot in the tabernacle and a measure of the manna was hidden in it. There was a golden lampstand in the tabernacle, and the seven lamps shone upon it. There was a golden censer in the tabernacle, and the chosen aloe was in its midst. There was a flower of incense in the tabernacle, smelled by all the house of Israel. There was a rod of air in the tabernacle, with which has blossomed the plant or watering. There was a golden table in the tabernacle, and the oblation bread was placed upon it. There was a high priest in the tabernacle, Offering sacrifice on account of the people. Since when the Almighty smelled the aroma, he lifted up the sins of the people. Through Mary, the daughter of Joachim, we learn of the true sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Who can speak of the honor of the tabernacle? which was decorated by the prophet. When the chosen scholar of, of the, the holy book saw it, they were greatly amazed. They thought with their enlightened minds and explained it through the holy books. They Mary, the daughter of Joachim, the tabernacle of the Lord of hosts. They liken the ark to the virgin and its chosen gold to her purity. Line in the mercy seat to the virgin and the cherubim <coughs> of glory overshadowing her. They like in the golden pond to the virgin and the measure of the manna to our Savior. They line the golden candles and to the church 
Under seven, lamb to eight, seven or They like in the golden <coughs> censer to the virgin and its aloes to Emmanuel. They like the flower of incense to Mary the Queen and the chosen incense to her virginity. They like in the rod of Aaron to the wood of the cross which my Lord was crucified upon in order to save us. They like in the golden table to the altar and the oblation bread to the body of the Lord. They liken the high priest to our Savior, the true sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. He who of himself exalts sacrifice upon the cross for the vision of our race. His good father smelt him in evening on Golgotha. He opened the gate of paradise and restored Adam to his authority. Through Mary, the daughter of Joachim, we learned of the true sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. And we also pray that we may win mercy through your intercession. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ, our true tabernacle who invited us into himself that we may come and be able to have fellowship with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. We ask, O Lord, that you who have called, Lord, that your tabernacle would be adorned with glory, Lord, that you would adorn, Lord, our inner hearts with your glory that you may come and you might find rest. And it might be a place, Lord, that within ourselves we might be able to meet you. And within your church we can meet you face to face as one body, Lord, as your people. We thank you, Lord, of, for revealing to us, Lord, that your, your great glory, that as we study, Lord, your tabernacle, we look and we see, Lord, all that you've desired, that we would meet you, Lord, face to face. How much you desire to have a feast that it is to, to your good pleasure, Lord, that we would enter into a intimate and divine fellowship with you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us an altar that we may come and lay our sacrifices, Lord, the sacrifice of our lives, Lord, that each and every one of us can be offered before you as living sacrifices as you, Lord, offered. Heavenly Father, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, as our sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for such a glorious revelation that you have made known to us. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we gather together and worship you, Lord, as your servants. Grant, O oh Lord, that we would be able also to adorn the small tabernacles, Lord, that you've entrusted, that we would serve, Lord, with your glory, your children, Lord, and your people. We pray this all in your holy and precious name, through the intercessions of St. Mary and St. Mark, with the blessings of these holy days. Make us, O oh Lord, worthy to pray thankfully our Father who art in heaven. Just some announcements. Uh, it'll show up on the screens, I hope. Just really quick, just a couple announcements. As you guys know that we are going to celebrate God willing, the next two Saturday nights we're going to have the last two um, Kiak praises, midnight praises, and they're going to go from 7, God willing, to midnight with a midnight liturgy, going from midnight to 2 a.m. for those of you that are waiting for Santa Claus to come in the morning. So... This Friday, this Saturday, God willing, um, there's going to be an all-night prayer with a liturgy, and then there's going to be one liturgy on, on Sunday morning, the 25th, because we're expecting maybe that attendance won't be as high. So because of that, we're, we're going to be one in one liturgy, God willing, here in the, in the sanctuary. And the same schedule will take place, God willing, next week on, or, or the week following New Year's Eve. During the main feast liturgy on January 6th, there's going to be um, a kids' liturgy from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., 
For, for those who have young, younger children who can't stay till midnight, and then the main liturgy will go from 7 p.m. to midnight. Um, Saturday, January 7th, is the Sunday school celebration from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Servants, I hope that we can put some effort into making it um, special for the kids, as many of them um, look forward to this event. Also, January 14th is the liturgy for the Feast of Circumcision. So you're going to find uh, liturgies basically almost every Saturday of the month of January. You're going to find on the 14th and on the 21st the, the Feast of Our Lord, the Circumcision, and the Feast of the Wedding of King of Galilee. And then there's going to be a Servants Orientation Spiritual Day that on, on January 21st from 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then Wednesday, February 22nd, um, there's going to be a servants meeting. It's going to be our next servants meeting as we try to gather each season of the year to come together as one church family. So we just want to encourage everybody that you uh, to make the best of the rest of the fast. I know that once the 25th kind of hits, everybody kind of gets distracted and we kind of lose um, just because, you know, like all the festivities. So you want to make sure that you maintain the spirit of the fast and, and, and everything uh, and, and we can maintain our spirit of worship as we prepare for the reception of the Lord. Also, there's going to be a pre-servants class. It was a successful class that we had in the past. If you're interested in becoming a servant and growing and, and learning more um, about our church and our faith and our theology, this is an excellent, excellent um, venue in which you can do that. The pre-servants prep class, it's going, or the servants prep class is going to be starting January 9th from 7.30, p, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's going to be every week, God willing, on Mondays for, I think, I believe it's, I think we said it's five months or... For six months. For, it's going to be a six-month course. And I have no idea what that is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know what that is. Okay. Now may the love of God, the Father, grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, the gift and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all.